Well, hello everyone and happy Thursday. It has been a whirlwind week and change here. I am actually on the East Coast now, but I wanted to update you guys uh, about what is happening in Napa Valley. Um, so Firewise, it is uh, October 8th today. So Thursday, October 8th, last Sunday, um, very, very early in the morning, uh, we started getting alerts from what's called Nixle um, about a fire that broke out over on the opposite side of the valley from where I live over uh, in the Deer Park area, How Mountain. And uh, the fire seemed to be um, very, very big. Um, it seemed to be growing in size very rapidly. Uh, people were evacuated almost immediately. And um, it was interesting because I don't remember there being an immediate threat to the rest of the valley, the way that uh, it turned out to be later. But as the day progressed, um, and I remember, you know, kind of went around our business Sunday afternoon, and then by Sunday evening, we started getting notifications that St. Helena on the other side of the valley, on the eastern side, which, uh, or on the western side, I should say, which is not that far. It's only about five miles across as a crow flies. Um, the fire had essentially jumped. So it had moved uh, really from where it was, uh, the glass fire kind of moved, expanded, moved up, moved down, moved east, west. Um, and then also um, new pocket fires erupted over on Spring Mountain, which uh, really had been a largely unaffected area prior to that. So um, super scary. Uh, the fires ended up moving really, really close to where I live within about a half of a mile. Um, Everywhere around me was uh, evacuated uh, and our little section, um, because I live very, very close to the center of town, um, we were under a warning, but we were not mandatory, but we did choose to leave because the smoke was just so unbelievably thick. Um, what can I say? It was an incredibly scary time. Uh, many of my friends have lost their homes. They've lost their vineyards. They've lost... Um, everything. Uh, it's been, you know, a tragic couple of days, uh, and not to start off with a lot of gloom and doom, but I just felt like I owed you guys a little bit of an update as far as what was going on today, October 8th. Uh, I'm told that we're up to about 70% containment, which is great. Um, but you know, it's still a long ways to go and we're still, uh, in fire season. So, um, at this point, we just have to sort of stay vigilant and be aware of what's going on as far as the 2020 vintage goes. Um, I think those are questions that I'm going to save for next week because I'm going to be joined by vintner and winemaker Donald Pats, who you might know from Pats and Hall. He uh, left or sold his interest in Pats and Hall a couple of years ago and started three new projects. And we are going to be doing the very, very first tasting of the 2020 vintage. So he is hopping on with me and we're going to taste through barrel samples of what he's got for 2020. He is both focusing on Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from Sonoma, specifically from the Russian River Valley. And it is a no holds barred conversation. It is a conversation in which I will ask him the tough questions. We will taste the wines objectively. Um, and I welcome you guys to ask your questions too. 2020 is um, a crazy year for everyone. Uh, I think, you know, Napa Valley and, and Northern California wine country, not excluded. Uh, we had a series of fires that broke out in August that affected the crop uh, from a smoke team perspective. And certainly this last go around will affect it as well. Um, the smoke was incredibly thick. Uh, some people were, were able to get their grapes in, but some were not. So um, as always, it's a sort of too soon to tell what's going on, but I'd say across the board, uh, not looking great, but we're going to talk to Donald about his wines. Uh, he also makes wine in Napa Valley, so he will be able to give us some insight as far as what we can expect, what we should look for. Um, and then from a consumer standpoint, like, you know, what should you be buying in 2020 from Northern California, if anything? Uh, and I, I think he's going to have a lot of insight. And like I said, he has already agreed to be very transparent with his answers. This is not going to be PR spin. This is not going to be someone who's getting up there and being like, well, it's all good. Um, he is ready to answer questions and I'm ready to ask them. So I'm looking forward to chatting with him. That will be next Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And oh, hi, dad, how are you? Um, and uh, yeah, I'd say if you've got questions now, um, start DMing me. You can follow me at Zombie Vaughn on Instagram. I'd love to hear what your questions are, um, both in the trade and, and consumer. You know, what are you guys curious about? What do you need to know? Um, I know what my questions are as far as, 
you know, what do the wines actually taste like when they are smoke tainted? Is it textural? Is it smell? Is it aroma? Is it just that they, you know, taste like a, like a Syrah? Like, does it taste like barbecue? Um, I can tell you off the bat, no, that is not just generally what they taste like. There is a uh, smoke taint is a very real thing. Um, it's something that we're still struggling to understand. It's a very complicated thing. Uh, but again, Donald will be able to uh, be on hand for that. God, it's so interesting. It's like just a few weeks ago, we were just talking about smoke taint and uh, getting the real issue at that point was trying to get the the samples to the ETS lab in order to get them back in time to figure out whether or not the grapes actually had smoke taint uh, early on. And then the second round of fires um, came around and it was uh, <laughs> just kind of a hellish ordeal. So um, I will say this, this round for St. Helena, um, the second round is personally um, just subjectively from my standpoint. And I think most would agree it was the worst we've ever seen. Um, hopefully the worst we ever will see in that particular area, but we're so lucky Santa Lena and Napa Valley, you know, really the Valley floor has been spared so much, you know, even in the fires in 17, um, you know, it's never really come quite as close as it did this, this time around. And um, I'm sure many of you saw the horrific pictures and images of Calistoga Ranch burn, burning down, Meadowood restaurant, the restaurant at Meadowood uh, burnt down, um, you know, just really, really tragic loss. And then, like I said, of course, a lot of my friends and colleagues around the Valley lost their homes, lost their businesses, lost their jobs. Um, so on top of what is already a very challenging year, this uh, definitely added to that. So I encourage you, if you want to do good, if you want to help, uh, if you have the means to assist, I know it's really, really hard right now, but if you would like to assist, the best organization I can suggest to for you right now is the Napa Valley Community Foundation. It's NapaValleyCF.com. They are doing everything from helping to um, get people evacuated, uh, assisting them with what they need in the way of gift cards and food, clothing, um, and then assisting with like navigating insurance claims. I mean, that's something that, God, I hope none of us have to deal with at any point in our lives, but navigating the insurance companies for when your home burns down. Um, these guys really do it all from, from medical to legal to uh, just direct assistance with the fires are very, very comprehensive and an organization that uh, I think most of the Valley is on board with uh, helping to support. So I recommend you go there. Now on to a slightly more, <laughs> uh, less gloom and doom topic than I think um, the fires are, uh, I wanted to um, also talk about a wine that I'm really excited uh, about. Sudani is not technically Spring Mountain AVA, it's at St. Helena, but um, I specifically wanted to talk about this wine. One, I'm very, very excited about it. But two, uh, Beverly Sodani and her husband Arvind, uh, their little six and a half acre parcel, um, sort of at the base of, of Spring Mountain in St. Helena, they were very, very close to the fires, uh, you know, right near a lot of other vineyards that, that did not fare quite as well. Um, but they did a ton of, a ton of work to try and make sure that obviously their vineyards were spared, but also to make sure that the community was taken care of around them. So they were, you know, helping the firefighters, feeding people. I mean, just like in the midst of a crisis, when you're dealing with your own, uh, livelihood and your home and the place that they spent 10 years trying to find this piece of land, uh, so that they could, have their dream winery and vineyard. Um, and it was heavily, heavily threatened by the fire. So to be dealing with that, and then to also have uh, the wherewithal to be able to assist with all of the needs of the, the frontline workers, um, firefighters and uh, EMTs and, and police officers. And um, I, I just think what they did was amazing. So um, I wanted to give a special shout out to them uh, for this episode and also talk about the wine because I'm super excited about the wine. I'm going to record a full, full a uh, comprehensive video on this. And then also I've already filmed a wine in 60 seconds in case you're like, I don't have that kind of time. Um, but anyway, uh, this is Sodani. This is the 2016 reserve. Like I said, uh, six and a half acres in St. Helena. Um, it's a hillside vineyard that, like I said, uh, really kind of, if, if you're on the Western side of St. Helena, kind of nestled up into that hillside there. So um, you've got a, some really nice, um, a nice area of land where you're not quite at a high elevation, uh, but you're, you're just enough so that there's a bit of a struggle there. So um, really gorgeous grapes. And then also uh, they got a guy named Thomas Rivers Brown, who you might be familiar with from making 100 point wines like Schrader. So 
um, you know, a, a dream team, so to speak, between Thomas and then this incredible parcel of land, which rumor has it used to go to a an ultra, ultra premium winery in Napa Valley, whom I cannot reveal, but, um, you know, very, very, very premium, like as premium as they get. Um, so that should give you a little bit of an insight. Uh, question, Carl, will wine access have this? That is a great question. I don't know. I actually um, just got this directly from Sodani. So maybe, I don't know. Let's have the wine access team try it and see if they like it. I can't imagine they won't because it's absolutely delicious. Um, I will say this is a premium Napa Valley Cabernet. So this is not inexpensive. This uh, the reserve is 195 a bottle and the estate is 125 a bottle. Um, and they do come in three packs. So, you know, very expensive Cabernet, but you know, when you get into um, this level of winemaking and this caliber of grapes to be expected. Now, what I will say is uh, compared to the wine that the grapes were going into before, kind of a steal because that wine was going for uh, in the thousands of dollars. So, you know, whatever, whatever you, uh, if that makes sense for you, then great. If not, no big deal. Um, but I think this is really beautiful. I love that she also calls them like her baby sleeping elements because they're so sweet. Um, but this is a passion project from, uh, from Arvind and Beverly Sodani. They're wonderful people. Um, they really technically started in 2006. They are Burgundy and Bordeaux lovers really wanted to get into the business. And in 2006, um, before they had their own land, decided to purchase fruit from a little known vineyard called the Tokolon Vineyard in Oakville, um, which is, of course is very, very prestigious and, and famous. And um, they, uh, they took about 10 years, like I said, to find their perfect parcel of land and did so in this little pocket of St. Helena on the western side of the valley. Um, and, you know, I just think this wine, you know, clearly expresses terroir, but then it also has uh, the hand of Thomas on there in that, you know, ultra rich, but refined sensibility. So um, I don't know if you can see the colors so, so well, but I will say like super dark and purpley. Um, this is not a wine that I would expect from, uh, if I just read the label and I saw St. Helena, probably not what I would expect from a St. Helena cab as far as intensity and as far as color. This is something that I would expect to see maybe from Oakville, you know, closer to like Tokolon style, maybe, um, you know, maybe Mount Veeder, just like intense, intense structure uh, and depth of flavor. But I think that speaks to the hillside that where they're situated, you know, you get a little bit, you get that, you know, gorgeous St. Helena lushness, that femininity, um, but then you also have this like intensity that you might expect from a mountain vineyard uh, or from somewhere in like Western Oakville, like Tokolon Vineyard. Um, Carl's single cab. Yes, 100% cab. I can even give you the clones if you want to get super, super geeky as I pulled up the uh, the tech sheet. So 100% uh, Cabernet, clones 7, 15, and 337. And the barrel aging was 20, 20 months in 100% new French oak. And for those of you wondering what the alcohol is, a modest 14.7 uh, with, with 173 cases produced. Um, you know, I say modest 14.7, not, you know, not compared to other regions, but actually 14.7 um, in Napa Valley, not, uh, you know, pretty, pretty moderate, so to speak. Um, let's talk about how this wine tastes and smells, shall we? So we talked about the color um, on the nose. It's really, really dark. Um, I get tons of purple fruits um, and black fruits. So like those, that cassis, um, that black currant, that blackberry, um, really, really rich and intense. But I also get a lot of like non-fruit savory things. So a little bit of that, that, that St. Helena, sagey, rosemary, bouquet de garni that I love that I get from, um, from somewhere like Spotswood. Um, sorry, I'll answer this question. 2016 is the vintage, beautiful, stunning vintage in Napa Valley. Um, so, so yeah, so the savory stuff that I get from St. Helena, this is why I love St. Helena, especially the Western side of things, because you can get all of this intensity and overtness that you would get from Oakville. But then I also find in St. Helena, uh, and I, I, I can't really quantify why, but uh, I love that you get all of these non-fruit things, all of these, these savory sort of florals. So tons of violet, um, that sage, that rosemary, 
And then also like I get a little bit of a, a, a sweet tobacco sort of cigar thing going on as well. So um, lots and lots going on. It's got 20 months of new French oak, like I said. So that oak is still, you know, you're still smelling a little bit of it. So you're smelling that vanilla, that cardamom, that cinnamon. Um, but I think it's starting to dive more into um, the cigar box, cigar leaf uh, territory that I love so much. Um, really, really intense. I have gone back to this wine a few times now in the past two hours and it's really changed pretty dramatically. Um, you know, telltale sign of a, of a high quality wine, something that's very complex and um, obvious, but understated at the same time. So palette. Gorgeous richness and intensity. It's got, you know, those fine, fine green tannins, but gosh, is it like velvety and supple. Um, it's a rich mouth coating wine. I mean, if you are someone that loves, um, you know, things that are, uh, more Thomas Rivers Brown style, more purpley fruit. Like I think this is probably closer to something like, uh, like a realm. Uh, so if you've ever had any of the realm wines, which I think, uh, especially moon racer that like stag's leap district, um, you know, that gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, dark purpley fruit and intensity of structure. That's kind of what this wine reminds me of. Um, how close to the yesterday style? Uh, yesterday, heavily oaked wine, um, gorgeous fruit source. Uh, I would say quality for quality from a fruit standpoint, um, about the same. Um, this may be having. I don't know if it would have a slight edge, but I will say the profile is completely different. Like I said, this leans more. Uh, yesterday leaned more like the red side of things and, um, you know, something like realm, uh, tends to lean more like the purple side. So, uh, structurally, stylistically, um, very, very similar, but you know, this is a premium high end Cabernet. This is what you want when you're spending $200 on a Napa Valley Cabernet. This is premium. This is all the bells and whistles. Um, but still a really pure expression of fruit. Like this is a gorgeous, gorgeous wine. Super rich, very lush, very purpley, really intense tannin, all of that tobacco, cigar leaf, all of those savory things that were happening before still happening uh, from the nose onto the palate now. Um, you know, for me, this is a wine that I could, could have easily sold at press uh, opened it and been ready to go and people would have had it with a steak and been like, wow, this is amazing. Um, but, you know, this is a wine to be on the lookout for. This is really only, um, I think their, their second vintage, uh, the 16, we yeah, actually should check that, um, from the estate. Um, let's see, 15, 14. Um, yeah. So like it's only the second or third vintage from the estate and, I think, you know, the fruit is clearly high quality. Um, they clearly know what they're doing. They've got Thomas Rivers Brown, which is just, he's the best. Um, when it comes to this style, like Thomas knows what he's doing. They're big, they're brash, but they're also incredibly well-made. Um, this is also, I should, I should caveat because I've, I've talked about this wine in a way that, you know, could make it seem like, you know, it's a little fleshy and it, it doesn't have, uh, it could be a little soupy because it is a high octane big Cabernet, but I will say this wine has structure and grip. Um, it's got a really, really um, an intensity that I think you wouldn't expect from a wine, like I said, from Sinalina, but also it's not a, it's not a blousy, soupy, syrupy wine. Like it's intense, but it's focused. Um, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So uh, really super impressed with this wine. I'm really looking forward to dad. If you're still watching, I'm definitely bringing this to um, to dinner later when we, when we all eat together so that everyone can try it. Um, and like I said, this is the 2016 Sudani reserve. The estate wine, which is 125 for those of you who are wondering um, that is made to be a little bit more approachable in its youth. So this is meant for aging. This wine I would love to see in another 10 years. I think this will be really, really pretty. Um, what else do I have to say? Um, yeah, I mean, keep Napa in your in your prayers and your thoughts. Um, we really, I really personally appreciate all of the messages you guys have sent me over the past uh, week and a half. Um, we are all well. My home is fine. My family is fine. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be on the East Coast for a little while uh, trying to find some 
sense of stability in the coming months because it has just been a little too crazy for my liking. Uh, and like I said, uh, next Thursday marks uh, the the virtual tasting, virtual barrel tasting with Donald Pats. And I'm really excited about that. I hope you guys will join. Um, what else? Uh, weekly wine mix is coming back. I don't know if I told you guys that on here, but it's coming back. Uh, I've got the wines. Uh, we're all set. And I'm going to be on a new platform starting at the end of the month called Daily Tastings. So that is going to be a place where you can watch all, all different wine creators uh, like me, you can watch someone other than me for a change. Um, talk about wine uh, on a platform that was built by Andrea Robinson, who's a master sommelier. So uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. We had a little soft launch last week. Um, not ideal timing from the fire standpoint. So uh, the next real go uh, at it is going to be at the, at the end of the month. So I'm excited about that. Um, thank you guys. This has uh, been really sort of cathartic in some ways. Uh, talking about the fires is always difficult. Um, I, I, Anytime someone asks me about it, I, I get very emotional. Um, I, hopefully I come together for this one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been a, it was a very trying time, a very emotional time. Um, I don't think there was a day that went by uh, when the flyers were blazing that I, I wasn't in tears at some point during the day. I mean, it just, you know, every time you look at your phone or Twitter, or, you know, alert would come through your heart would just break because, um, you know, someone else was in danger. So uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for, for watching. I hope to see you over on Instagram in the meantime. Uh, and I will be getting more consistent with uh, when I post, how I post, and what I do over here on YouTube as this year starts to even out for me a little bit, which I'm very much looking forward to. God, I need some stability in my life. Um, anyway, thank you all. I'll see you soon. I am safe. And thank you for your concern. I appreciate it. Bye.